Hey guys, I am uh, currently uh, in the woods uh, down behind our farm in uh, in Galax. Just thought I would uh, come with somewhere a little bit different to do the devotion. It's really loud with uh, squeaking toys, dogs, and, and kids up at the house. So I got down here where you can just hear the birds and it's kind of peaceful. Um, but this morning I, I was thinking about just how people are very unsettled. They feel like we are um, the world feels like we have become in, uh, thrown into turmoil, which we which we have. We've a lot of the world has been thrown into turmoil. Um, but this morning I wanted to I wanted to share something from Numbers chapter twenty. Um, this is a passage I've, I've always enjoyed reading through because I think it speaks not only to to my heart because I, I feel like I am Israel a lot of times complaining in the wilderness, um, really anxious for God to do what He said He was going to do. He led us out of You're going to lead us out of slavery, but you're going to leave us in the wilderness. And so for a, for a lot of us, for some of you all, that that's what you feel like right now. Okay, you know, I was I was perfectly content uh, in school uh, with with my life the way it was, and now I've been thrown out into the wilderness, and, and nothing seems to be going right. Uh, in fact, everything seems to be going the exact opposite of right. I've I've, I've missed out on so much uh, the last month, uh, and I'm going to miss out on even more in the next coming months. And, and so Israel is is in the wilderness, and and they're at a place uh, called Meribah, and and. There's no water for the congregation, and they had assembled together. This is verse 2. Um, against Moses. They had assembled against Moses and against Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses and said, Would that we not perish with our brothers, uh, perished before the Lord. Why have you brought the assembly of the Lord into the wilderness, that we should die here, both we and our cattle? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is no place for grain or figs or vines or pomegranates. There is no water to drink. So they're, they're complaining. They, they've been brought out of slavery, a place of, of, of a terrible place. Uh, they, were, they were being worked double time to finish the Pharaoh's um, buildings and structures and, and, and roadways and making, making uh, um, bricks. And here they are. They're, they're free from that slavery. They're, they're under the guidance of the Lord, and yet they're complaining. Um, they, they don't see the forest for the trees, um, so to speak. And, and so they go to Moses and Aaron and they're complaining, like, we want water, we want water, we want water. Um, why, why don't you just leave us back in Egypt where it was best, better? We had water and stuff there. They're missing the picture. They did not have it made back in Egypt. In fact, it, it was a lot worse for them. But they're complaining about dying here. Why would we come out here to die? So then Moses and Aaron uh, went into the presence of the assembly, to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and fell on their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff and assemble the congregation, you and Aaron, your brothers, and tell the rock, Tell the rock before their eyes to yield its water. You shall bring water out of the rock for them and give them the congregation and their cattle. And then Moses and then Moses took the staff before the Lord and he commanded as he commanded him. So, what is Moses and Aaron's first inclination to do when people came and they're complaining and they're they're, they're feeling like they, they nothing is going right? The Lord is not on their side. They intercede for the people. They go before the Lord and the Lord has an answer. The Lord answers them and says. Go to this rock and speak to it, and water's going to flow out of it. All right, he has given them a directive. Do this, and this shall happen. And everything's going to be okay. That's what he says. He says, things, the people are complaining. Okay, here, go do this, Moses and Aaron. Go speak to this rock, and water will flow out, and there'll be enough for the people and for their cows. Very straightforward. So when the Lord speaks to us, we listen. Um, and right now, we're, we're Israel, we're not Moses and Aaron in this situation. We, we are Israel. We are complaining. We are, oh, this is not what I want. Lord, please just get, get us out of this. Give the government some answer. Give them, give them a, a, a vaccine, something to get us out of this situation. That's, that's kind of where our minds are right now. That's where the rest of the world is. We're, we're like Israel. We're complaining. Um, we're complaining about the things that are around us. And not all of us. Some of us are perfectly content. Hey, I, I'm actually enjoying being at home some. I'll enjoy being out more. So, but we have people that can go before us and pray for us. I mean, your, your elders in New Century, we are praying for you. Uh, your parents, uh, each other, you all should be praying, interceding for each other, praying that our hearts will be bent towards the things of God. Well, that's what Moses and Aaron are doing. They're going before the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, the holiness of the Lord, praying for the people, and God gives them an answer. But Moses and Aaron, too, are much like we are. Um, they tend to let their emotions get the best of them. They tend to not always listen to what the Lord commands. And so this is what happens in verse 10. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. Well, the Lord didn't say to speak to the people. He said to speak to the rock. 
But Moses turns about face and speaks to the people, and he speaks rather harshly. Hear now, you rebels, shall we bring water out of this rock for you? It's not what the Lord said to do. The Lord again says, Take your, assemble, assemble the, the congregation, you and Aaron and your brothers, and tell the rock before their eyes to yield water. That's what they were told to do. But instead, Moses turns us around and he speaks to the people very harshly. And this is what happens in verse 11. And Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice. Not once, but he struck it twice. Moses disobeyed what God had called him to do. He was supposed to speak to the rock and water was going to flow. But instead, Moses spoke to the people harshly against the Lord's commands and struck the rock. But God in his faithfulness, even when we don't always obey what God calls us to do, God is still faithful. And so what does God do? After Moses has struck the, rock, the staff and struck it twice, this is the second half of verse 11, it says, And water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank them and their livestock. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe in me, and hold me up as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. There are waters of Meribah where the uh, people of Israel quarreled with the Lord, and through them he showed himself holy. God still provided for them. He still gave them the water that they needed to live, even though Moses and Aaron disobeyed. This passage speaks a lot to us because how often do we find ourselves like Israel complaining about our situations, but how often do we find ourselves like Moses being given a command from God and doing what he has not commanded us to do. We do the exact opposite. And we, we say, well, I, I trust in the Lord, but you know what? I really don't like his way. I'm going to do it my way. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to complain to the people, and then I'm going to do it my way. And that's what Moses did. He, he went before the people, and instead of just speaking to the rock and letting the water flow, he spoke harshly to the people, struck the rock, and his consequence was severe. His consequence was, you're not going to lead these people into the promised land. It's not your job anymore because you did not show my holiness before the people. You did the exact opposite. So here's my challenge for you. Are you listening to the Lord? Or are you just complaining? Are you just like, I I'm not going to do what the Lord wants me to do. I'm going to do it my way and it's going to work. I don't care what the Lord says. I'm going to do it my way. This is a good time for us to sit and reflect on whether or not we are listening to what the Lord has called us to do or if we are doing things simply for our own, our own benefit. Are we complaining and, and bickering and, and doing things the way we want them to? Are we listening? Are we being joyful in what the Lord has given us? He's given us life, guys. Like, we, we are alive. We are living in a time that, that is unprecedented. Um, since the last hundred years, nothing like this has ever happened. We have unique opportunities to, to be obedient to what the Lord has called us to. We had a, a, an opportunity to be like Moses and be obedient and speak to the rock. Or we had the opportunity to be disobedient and strike the rock. So I want you to think about that. Are we being obedient to what the Lord has called us to do during this time? And so that's my prayer for you, that you will, you will think that through. Think through your obedience to the Lord. Are your, is your actions during this time, are your actions during this time reflecting the glory of God? Are you being like Moses and Aaron and striking the rock in anger because the people are complaining? So that's my challenge to you. Think through that through. And I, I'm praying for you guys um, daily. I hope, I hope that you all are, are doing well, that you're staying safe. Um, I, I'll, I'm going to hopefully Zoom next week. This week just did not work out with us traveling, and there's a women's thing tonight. So we will, we will Zoom next week. Um, bring some questions. You know, nothing, nothing too harsh because we're only going to have about 40 minutes at, at the most. Um, bring some questions to the table. We'll see if we can answer those. I've got, still got a couple of questions to answer on video and try to get to those this weekend. But love you guys. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, and we'll pray, and we'll be dismissed. Father, you are good and holy and faithful. We thank you for your creation. Father, Lord, we thank you that you are in control of all things. Father, just as you were in control of the people in the desert, Father, Lord, you are in control of us now, uh, here, uh, during the, the midst of this, this pandemic. And Father, we just pray, Lord, that you will lead us, that you will guide us. Father, that you will give the leaders of the church, the elders and the deacons, Lord, uh, Lord the, the youth leaders, Father, that you will give us wisdom in leading during this time, Father, and being faithful to your call and your command. We love you and praise you. You know you pray. Amen. Bye, guys.